thunderstorm system coming in. I've been hearing thunder, seeing flashes of lightning. It's just coming up from the south here. Oh, this is really, really. You can hear the winds picking up now. See the rain coming down to the south. Okay, here we go. Storm's coming. <laughs> I don't know if we'll get lucky and catch any lightning, but we got a big storm a coming. Just a well, wee little storm, but it's pretty good sized on the radar map. <sighs> Guess I'm not getting any yard work done today. Good evening, folks. I'm one step closer to getting this bed here ready. It's ready for dirt now. I didn't have much of my hardware cloth left, so I just put a little bit in the middle under the there and then put the landscape fabric over it. So hopefully that'll help. I still got to get some brackets to put in the corners here and bolt them and I need to find some long ones just to go across here get the get, put some long ones across here so I can uh, keep this from rocking back and forth since it doesn't sit quite flush because of these metal things here I couldn't get it any closer anyways well, that's that's pretty much all done for now. Uh, next step is getting the brackets on it and getting the dirt in it. I'm almost ready to get plants in the ground here. May have to get the thermometer to put out here for a few nights to see how cold it's getting out here. So I'll know. Meanwhile, we had a little storm blow through that I showed you, but here we have a beautiful sunset. Good night, and I'll see y'all later. Well, everyone, sometimes this is life. I got home, discovered I had forgotten to get cat food after work, and so I had to drive back into town, come to Walmart, pick up a cheap bag of cat food because I've only got $8 left, and um, go home. Not getting any yard work done tonight. If I, about all I'm going to get done tonight is maybe hanging up my hammock and watching the sun go down. So, this is what sometimes happens in life. You forget things. Oh, I'm back from my cat food run. My western sand cherry is in bloom. Ah, it's beautiful. The blossoms are starting to fade on the uh, Nanking cherry now. They're sure gorgeous while they lasted. But it just never cleared up enough for me to get that beautiful white bush against the blue sky pictures. So, yeah, now the blossoms are fading. But in oh, a few weeks we usually about the 12th of july around that middle about the middle first second week the second and third week of july is usually when they are ripe so that's when they'll be ripe and ready to pick and my rainier cherry is starting to bloom too yep my rainier cherry has some little blossoms on it. We're in the shadow of the house now, so you 
So the sun sun is going down. So you really can't see, but I'm gonna have to get the cherry covered this year with the garden cloth so that I will actually get cherries and the robins won't steal all my cherries. I really want cherries this year. And across the way, my neighbor's Bing cherry is in bloom too, which is great because it makes a great cross-pollinator for my Rainier. And it means I don't have to go and buy a second cherry tree. Of course, the Nanking cherry is also a great pollinator, but they often do not bloom at the same time. And my service berry bush is also in bursting out in full bloom, too. And if I can just remember to spray it for bugs after the blossoms fade, I might actually get some berries this year. And they won't be all full of bugs and be buggy and die. I didn't get them sprayed last year, and the bugs got, of course, most of them. But uh, yeah, it is beautiful. I really want to get a good, good uh, midday photo. Maybe Saturday. Hopefully the blossoms won't have start fading by Saturday, and we can get another, uh, get a good photograph of it. And my apple trees are starting to bloom. Um, the apple blossoms smell so lovely nice that it is. I, it's covered in blossoms and if I can remember to spray it after the blossoms fade I might not get so many buggy apples. My peach trees are finally leafing out and I actually got one tiny little flower bud there. So this one at least will be blooming this year. It's really late leafing out. Usually my peach trees leaf out in April and they bloom in April, but uh, boy, they are so late getting to it this year. Oh boy. And I think there's a lot more dead wood on here than what uh, I had hoped to see. But my other two little apple trees are also blooming. As you can see, by the light of the sunset, they are blooming nicely. I got these two honey crisp apple trees. This one I cleaned out more in pruning than I did with this one. And now that I'm looking at it, I can see where I should have just more branches that I should have snipped out at the center to really open up the in middle of it more. And I didn't. So... I will have to get to that, but they're blooming nicely, both of them, this year. I've also got some, been watering my trees too, so all my fruit trees have been getting watered. Uh, put the hose over here on this one and let it get watered. <sighs> and my neighbor who's going to come and till my garden. He's been having some problems with his little tractor. and So he had, didn't get over here this week to till it. Hopefully, he can. I'm going to have to text him and find out if he's gotten things fixed yet and can get over here and get my garden tilled because <laughs> I really got to get my seeds going and I would prefer to put them straight in the ground. They do so much better with... Uh, the plants are just sturdier. They're sturdier and they do so much better when I can just grow them directly out of the ground. And that's, oh, one other thing. Yesterday when my neighbor, my other neighbors came by, the ones who helped me with my lawn mowing and they did some pruning, uh, he got his son to help me dig out that, uh, that stake that property stake out of the middle of the yard so I don't go mowing over it again. So, yeah. This is, and it's it's bent. It was, it, it's been like that in the ground. I don't know how long it, 
must have bent when they drove it in the ground because it did not bend getting it out it was already bent he actually just dug a hole around it and pulled the thing out but uh yeah it was bent so that's that's my souvenir there a bent property stake <sighs> All right, well, I'll let y'all go and get back to y'all later. Yep, so a couple days ago, we were digging, and we found that. Gas companies come out, checked it, said it's okay. And that, down there, is my sewer pipe. Comes out of the house and goes to wherever, whatever septic system was put in in the 1940s is. And that is what we need to attach a clean out to. And we got to get a board put over that and fill that part of the hole back in so that everybody stays away from the uh, gas line. But the gas company did also finish marking out. And honestly, I have no idea how they drill, pulled that thing underground without disturbing my flower bed. Without busting up my 80 year old sidewalk it went under all of this all of this somehow they even got it under my rose bushes without even tearing them up it's like they must have had some kind of drill that they just put out down into the road and then just drill the straight line this way and all the way to here where this is where this pipe here, the old rusted part of this pipe is where the old propane tank used to be. That, and just, uh, yeah, put it through there, attached that to where the propane tank used to go in there. And uh, yeah, boy, it's a mystery. I have no idea how they got that without digging a trench. How did they lay that pipe in without digging a trench? Because I know the only dirt that I saw that had been disturbed was in my driveway and my flower beds and everything were totally undisturbed. So I'm, I'm, I'm just big mystery. Do they have equipment that can tunnel under the ground? Because they would have had to tunnel under this sidewalk and you can see this sidewalk has not been disturbed since it was, this little thing was poured in 1940. That, that's really old cement. That's old, 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 old cement. You know, that, this was poured in 1940. Mm. Yes. So, yeah, sometimes I wonder. How in the heck did they get all this? for my little old house, 83 year old sidewalk. When they laid it 26 years ago, they didn't lift this up or nothing, trench it. I just wonder, how did they do that? Because my lawn was undisturbed, the roses were big and bushy, I hadn't pruned them back yet at that time. And uh, it was just popping out of the ground and the only disturbed ground I could see was in my driveway so I assumed they just went 
down the middle of the driveway. And then over. And I thought they went over the driveway and went over. So that was the only ground that was disturbed was the ground in the driveway. Just up this side of it. So, that's weird. Anyways, I have no idea how gas companies lay these lines without tearing things up. So, the only things I've ever seen were where they did dig a big trench. It's a mystery to me, but I thought I'd let you see that. At least we found my sewer pipe, so hopefully at some point in time we can get the plumber back out here and he can put the access port there. And uh, I'm going to go find a board to lay across the top of that. Yeah, we need to find some kind of board to put there and backfill it and if anything we'll dig out all the way to the wall finish digging that out but then maybe he can get more tree roots and stuff cleaned out all the way to wherever the septic system dumps so I'll let y'all go for now I need to do a few things oh boy my lilacs are starting to flower and open up and it smells heavenly. I know you can't smell it, but I wish you could. That smells so nice. And I got the western sand cherry over there. I can smell it. It is just so fragrant. Nothing like the combined fragrance of the western sand cherry along whoops need to zoom back with my lilacs ah <sighs> mmm that smells so nice just a little bit of scento vision for you well folks there's nothing like a little smoke in the air to uh really bring out a dramatic sunset yeah i noticed throughout the afternoon it was getting pretty hazy and uh went looking at the idaho fire map and apparently there's a big fire southeast of twin falls and that smoke's just drifting up through the our way following <sighs> the air currents no real breezes. My climbing rose here is a victim of our super cold winter last winter. That fall freeze. We yeah, had that fall freeze just froze things. We got a freezing wind for a couple of days and it literally froze the leaves on the trees, the shrubs. And as you can see, it killed off a lot of these canes. So I got one nice live cane here that because it wasn't tied up. It was actually laying in the flower bed, so it survived the freeze and the winter. But I uh, do got a few little buds coming out here and there, so I'm going to try to figure out at what point I got live and at what point we got dead. I'm finding a few little tiny green buds here and there. So... But I think at least at this point here where that cane is split, that's definitely dead. So I'm I'm cutting the cane off the there and then I'll get my gloves before I handle these thorny things. They've got the most wickedest thorns you ever did see. I mean look at those thorns. Jeez. They are like horribly long, super sharp. But this is the prettiest pink rose. No scent to it. I don't know why it doesn't have a scent, but it's got these... They remind me of those peppermint candies. The flowers are pink and white striped, and they just remind me of peppermint candies. And this rose was here when I moved in here. So, better get to trimming. 
get the uh, get this moved and all the dead stuff away and get that one live cane tied up and uh, we'll see how things fare it'll it'll put up more from the roots I just got to give it a good heavy watering and what I thought earlier this year was more of my uh, hollyhocks nope that's not hollyhocks that's burdock I dig that out and then gotta use a shovel to get the roots all right that's all for right now me rambling smoking hollyhocks Yep, folks, that's uh, that's the sun coming up. That's how much smoke we got in the air right now. Yeah, don't know where the smoke's coming from, but it's, it's coming from somewhere. I haven't actually got on line to check. The yeah, well, only thing I checked yesterday was the Idaho fire map, and it showed a big fire down to the southeast of Twin Falls, up in the mountains. Didn't show anything closer. But that's what we got. A smoky sunrise. This beautiful Friday morning. Oh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my garden got tilled today. And as usual, I got some areas to fill in. This is, these are the areas where the his little tractor comes in and out, and it tends to leave these ditches. And I've got to do some smoothing out before I can get the tires out here. And so, I've got my rake. Hiding in the grass here. Yay. Yay for rakes. There's my rake. And I'm going to get busy and get this garden rake so we can start planting pumpkins. Boy, should have had this done a week ago. <sighs> well, everybody, I got this thing raked about as smooth as I'm going to get it raked. And getting kind of tired i even did some mowing here around the garden and uh i think i'm gonna go and sit down in my hammock over here get a little rest watch the sun as it goes down it's I still got quite a bit of smoke in the air not sure where all the fires are coming from or where the smoke trail's coming from. I haven't really gotten online to check Zoom Earth is the best place for checking to see where the smoke trails are. I'm gonna sit there and relax and watch the sun go down. Good afternoon, everyone. It's beautiful, beautiful Saturday afternoon. I just got finished with my lunch. Did a little work this morning. Came home. Well, I ran some errands. So it was probably 11.30 before I got home. 
this is the perks of country living got my laundry washed and hanging out and it is going to smell so wonderfully amazing i just love having my clothes smell so good but i oh boy the apple trees are in full bloom the bees are really busy i don't know if you can hear them They are just so busy in the tree. Oh, I just love seeing the bee bees and the apple blossoms. They just smell amazing. They are so amazing. So this is the my old apple tree. Variety unknown. It's always been guessed it's either a Jonathan or a Macintosh. One of those old varieties. But oh my, those blossoms are just, they smell so amazing. And if we walk over here, my honey crisp apple trees are in full bloom. Look at that. They are just full of honeybees. Ah. Oh. Isn't that amazing? I actually got two varieties of honeybees out here. I got one that has a darker striped abdomen and another with an almost golden abdomen. So I think I got honeybees from probably two different hives out here in my little honey in my apple trees. I know there's several people around here who do have hives, so having a uh, people, neighbors, within five mile range, because honeybees will range is up to five miles looking for flowers. Some of these bees could be almost five miles from their home hive, and they're here pollinating my flowers. And I'm going to have lots and lots of apples. I'm really going to try this year to practice, uh, actually, um, Oh, what is it called? Where you basically uh, go and you pluck off all the small fruit and just leave the large fruit and have it all spaced several inches apart so you get larger fruit. Usually I get a lot of small, tiny fruits because I don't do that. I just let whatever develop, develop, and what doesn't, doesn't. But I am, I'm going to try to weed out the tiny ones and just leave one big piece of fruit here and there <laughs> and try to see if I can get larger fruit but oh this is so beautiful this is so beautiful and hold on one second my peach tree is finally blooming not a lot of blossoms yet they're opening up here and there yeah but my peach tree is finally blooming uh, winter was pretty hard on my peach tree. I got a lot more dead on here than I thought I was going to have last month. Last month it looked like it was starting to bud out and do pretty good, but when I pruned it last month ago, but it's just not been... It didn't leaf out last month like I expected it to. And my cherry is still blooming. My neighbor's cherry is still blooming. So, there's a good chance that we will get cherries this year. I'm going to, once the uh, blossoms are gone, I'm going to have to get some way and a ladder. I really need to get me a ladder. And get some garden cloth. So here's uh, my update on my little fruit orchard here. And... We're going to get busy because I got a lot to do here. I've only just started my projects. I got another garden hose, got it rolled out. So I have got another second garden hose. I happened to find one at the store. It's also a 130 foot garden hose. So I'll be able to get my hoses all the way out here. 
And I still got to buy more hoses. I got to get enough hose to reach out to the back fence and to finish doing the front and side yards. So I can water the front yard, water the side yard, water all my tree and have enough hoses that will stretch all the way to the lilacs. They didn't get enough water last year. And yeah, I think that's part of why they're struggling so much this year. But next project, we got this project we got to get to. And but I'm not going to make you stand here and watch me for 20, 30 minutes while I put the tires out. <sighs> I'm going to go. I'm going to put the tires out. And you will see them when we come back. And presto. With the help of a little YouTube magic, the tires are now in the garden. All ready for me to plant my little pumpkin seeds in and we are going to get pumpkin seeds in the ground we're going to water it really really good i'll probably be putting the seeds in this evening after i'm done mowing and we're going to put the sprinkler out here and we're going to water this really really well all night long yes i do let my sprinkler run all night long but you know what i grow a fantastic pumpkin patch All right, folks, I'm sitting here in my hammock taking a little break from the mowing because I got to work on another project. Rest a bit and get back to it. Today is kind of warm. It's in the 80s, but we need to get the brackets put on this and get it filled. I know I had a neighbor who said he would come over on Friday and do it, but uh, with their son, graduating their middle son is graduating in fact they he graduated today they had a graduation ceremony and they're doing all kinds of stuff as a family so he's not going to be able to get here till next week and i got to get my peas planted i got to get my peas soak my seeds and get them in the ground and the peas are going in here so yeah got to get it done and uh so i'm Got my stuff, got my little my little screwdriver drill. It's a little Ryobi, it's really handy. And I'm gonna get it done. Well, everybody, I got my outside brackets, the three I got on. And I got my inside brackets done. As you can see, in all the corners, nicely reinforced. And a couple on the outside. I had to finish it by hand with my little handy dandy thingy uh, because my battery in my little Ryobi uh, kind of gave up the ghost halfway through the job. <laughs> had to take it in and get it charging. Finished it up by hand. At least I'd gotten all my holes pre drilled. Okay, so now I am just going to work on. Uh, getting this box filled. All right, everybody, we are almost full. I think I need about another three bags of topsoil, though. So it's getting late in the afternoon, but I'm gonna run back into town because the little garden center isn't open on Sunday. Kessler's is closed on Sunday, so can't do it tomorrow. And I'm going to get three more bags of topsoil and uh, finish topping these off. Then I'll take all my seed dirt. This dirt has, is full of marigold seeds. And we're going to spread it out on the very top of all of this. And then we're going to uh, just get my new soaker hoses that I got. Lay them out here in the bed and... Uh, turn them on all night and get everything really, really well watered tonight. And I'll also work on the mowing some more. I uh, took a little break to do this and I end up longer break than I intended. 
my poor mower is neglected and drag it into the shade here and get back to my mowing I've generally with a push mower it takes about five to six hours to mow my entire lawn and that does not count the back little back pasture which also needs to be mowed may not get mowed till tomorrow we'll see all right but need to run I put all my trash into this in here just this is just all full of all the empty bags from the composted manure and the topsoil and gotta go get three more bags of topsoil at least finish getting this all filled in and we will be back in a little bit oh boy all right y'all i went and got three more bags of topsoil and i'm home and i went and got my little trusty yard wagon and if y'all don't have anything like this you really ha should have one this is probably the best purchase i ever made in my entire life was this wagon it has been so handy dandy Ah, <sighs> so let's get her loaded up and head back over the raised beds and fill them up. All right, I got the rest of the dirt in here. And now we're going to top off the tops of these beds with this dirt here that I took out of the beds. And all this dirt has all my marigold seeds in it. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll have marigold sprouting all over in my raised beds. <laughs> oh boy. I sure hope I get a few flats of marigolds out of all this dirt. So let's get that in, the, the so in there. Well folks, this is not good. And it's gonna cost me a little money, but I noticed one of my tires on my wagon was flat, and when I looked, yeah, I'm missing a huge chunk of tread there. Oh, boy. Yeah, so I'm going to have to get me something, take that tire off. Just got to take that one nut off there, pull it off the axle. Take it to my lawnmower store, and, uh, See if they have a tire, lawnmower tire, that'll fit that rim and get me a new tire on my yard wagon. Okay. Yep. That's going to cost a little pretty penny. Well, looks like my new soaker hoses are going to work. Pretty good. Looks like it's well worth the $40 I spent. I was going to go and see if I could find some cheap 25 foot long hoses for $12.97 or something at Walmart. But uh, they were at Walmart was out of soaker hoses. They didn't have anything except for these. And these were 50 foot each, and they're 20 bucks for a 50 foot hose. So I guess I've actually saved money because that comes to $10 for 25 feet. So, yep, yeah, I think these ones are going to work out really good. I'm going to leave it on all night, let it get nice and let it go I'm going to go inside right now I'm tired as you can tell from the way I'm talking but I got my little things on back in the squash bed those I actually use in the fall to cover up my squashes so they don't get frosted Try to keep my growing season going as long as I can. But right now, all the dirt I put in here was pretty dry. So I'm going to leave the soaker hose on all night. 
and by morning this bed should be pretty well saturated and also after I get done mowing this area I may tomorrow I'll put the sprinkler on the overhead sprinkler lawn needs to be watered too so we'll get the big sprinkler going here like I normally do and in the meantime it's getting on dinner time I'm gonna go in feed my animals get me some dinner and then I will come out and work on getting seeds in the ground on the pumpkin patch and getting the uh, sprinkler going on it tonight so we're getting there garden started by tomorrow I should be able to get my tomatoes planted in here it should be nice and really well soaked down so I can get my tomato cages in get my tomatoes I think this sprinkler is gonna work really good oh. I've thought of getting these kind of sprinklers before these soaker hoses my daughter uses them in her garden beds and they work really super good in her beds I've always been imp impressed at how well watered and how well her plants do and she get, uses these kind of hoses I was like do those things really work that well and she's like oh yeah apparently they do so I'm happy and as long as my plants are happy this summer, that will make me really happy. But yep, we've, it looks like they're going to work out just fine. <sighs> I may end up replacing all my old soaker hoses with these kind. Actually, $10 for 25 feet of hose and, you know, 19 98 for a 50 foot hose I've got a couple other my raspberries and also my rose border rose going to be lilac border between my uh, house and my neighbor's house I like to use soaker hoses to water that too and the ones in there are just all wearing out so I may be buying more of these hoses as I can get the money. Well, talk to y'all later, folks. We gotta get some mowing done. After dinner, of course. Well, folks, looks like we got a little bit of a storm coming in. But at least we got one lilac that's blooming nicely just beautiful lots of beautiful flowers and I got a morning dove that's nesting up in here keeps flying out every single time I come by oh god look at that heavenly beautiful flowers but yeah look up at the sky off to the north winds picking up but off to the north you got got the uh, I think it's raining up there and you can see these clouds have been moving in temperatures have dropped from 83 down to 78 it actually feels really good got pretty hot this afternoon yeah got all these clouds moving in but yeah I got a little bit of thunderstorm moving in winds coming out of the north you can see how dark it is to the north I haven't checked the radar but I bet we got a bit of rain going on up there I'll talk to y'all later even up the last little bit here well if you like this video please share it with your friends remember to hit the like button leave a comment and uh, encourage folks to subscribe look at that sun.
trying to get it to focus. Oh, I was about to go dead. Another. Oh, sorry, I can't hold this still. I don't have a tripod. No tripod, folks. And my arms ain't too steady. But, yep. Another smoky sunset. So, good night everyone, and I'll see you on the next video. Remember to check tomorrow morning for my Sunday morning hymn. Let us all press on.